Dragon skin was rejected by the military for three main reasons. Number one being that the epoxy that holds it all together um, fails at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, this is bad because when you're in a Humvee, you like you leave your vest in the back of a trunk, you don't realize how hot it gets, the epoxy fails, the scales fall out, it doesn't provide any protection. So that's actually dangerous. The second reason is that it's really expensive and um, considering how expensive it is, it doesn't provide much more protection than the traditional interceptor OTV. Um, and the third reason is it doesn't really take advantage of its inventive idea. The whole thing behind Dragon Skin is mobility, but you don't need to mobility at the top part of the chest, which is the only part that it really covers. Now, the changes I've made in the vest are um, I've elongated it 10 inches uh, at the belly button to effectively cover the groin and hips. As you can see, it's only covered at the front and sides. This is a tactical choice to save weight. The back is covered by a 10 by 12 uh, polyurethane plate to save weight as well. Uh, the neck guard would be made out of hard armor in real life, but here it's just fabric. I've added that. Um, and you'll see the bicep guards here made out of hard armor to stop rifle rounds. Um, they're held in by elastic and fabric, and they stop bullets from entering the body from the side. You can see. Um, ideally, you'd want to combine this technology with um, a mask, a ballistic mask, and some sort of leg armor. Um, but this is a good start. Uh, you'll notice from the Call of Duty Black Ops heat map, um, about 80% of the shots go, you know, from belly button to above the knee which is the one place that the armor doesn't cover. It's just where the the easiest shot is to be made. It's where the gun naturally rests as well. So it's kind of a shame that that's the one place that's not covered. Um, another innovative feature of this vest is it's made out of ballistic steel to keep it ultra slim and it doesn't use uh, Kevlar to hold it together, it uses rather nylon um, this keeps saves weight and keeps the design slim. Uh, Kevlar has no point when uh, the hard armor covers everything anyways. Um, every single scale uh, is sewn at the top and encased in fabric and sewn together. Uh, this stops the um, melting effect of the epoxy so it doesn't matter how wet it gets, how hot it gets, it'll always hold together. Um, the scales are still layered like they are in the original vest on top of each other. They're, it's sewn at the top um, and they're layered left to right. Um, um, another innovative feature that I've added is since it's made out of ballistic steel instead of uh, a combination of ceramic and steel, uh, it keeps it ultra slim, meaning you can add a piece of uh, quarter inch padding behind each plate as you'll see I've done. Um, I'll go into further detail in that in the scales demonstration. Um, with the added padding combined with the scales effect, there's just no blunt trauma to be had here. Uh, you can also add, theoretically, a fourth of an inch sti thick steel uh, plate to cover the main area on the chest with about an inch of padding behind it. This theoretically stops the uh, Barrett 50 cal even, but I'd imagine you'd be out for most of the fight at least with a cracked rib or so. Um, all right, let's go into the mobility testing and whatnot.
Here's an up-close demonstration of the scales. This is one before it's been encased in fabric. As you can see, uh, it's had um, padding uh, glued onto the back just to hold it in place until it's put in the fabric. This actually isn't made out of ballistic steel, if you can probably tell. Uh, I used hard plastic to simulate it, but uh, it's good for the presentation model at least. Uh, this is it once it's been encased in fabric. You can see uh, the fabric's been glued together at first to hold it in place, then uh, heavily stitched all around it um, to keep it firm. Uh, this would be nylon in real life. All I could get a hold of is uh, some regular old cotton mixed with spandex. Um, you can see the stitch marks here at the top where it would be connected to the vest. Um, and then you have about 80, uh, I used 81 of these to complete the whole vest. Um, I'm a relatively small guy, it might be slightly more than that, but that's pretty much it right there. Alright, well thanks for watching guys. Pinnacle Armor, I hope you're watching this. Obviously, um, I couldn't patent the um, alterations I've made on your design. I, you can't uh, make a patent on a pre-existing patent. Um, I know about that because I uh, have a couple international patents myself on leg armor. Uh, you'll want to check that out soon when the presentation video is up. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm not really looking for anything per se for this. Um, I'm not entitled to anything legally. So if you want to use this, I'd be happy just to get my idea out there, help our soldiers out, uh, get some good armor on the go. Uh, there hasn't really been some good armor since medieval times. Um, so I'd just like to see this get made. I'd appreciate any compensation to keep my endeavors going. Uh, for those of you wondering how long this took, I'd say probably between 50 and 60 hours, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, if I get enough likes, I'll put up a how-to video. Um, yeah, but I had to cut out like 80 of these hard plastic tiles out of scissors. My hands were bleeding. 160 of these uh, pieces of fabric. Uh, I used uh, Easy Mend or uh, some commercial um, fabric adhesive uh, to hold it together. Um, but stitching it together would take a, a lot longer than that. Um, so uh, any comments or uh, questions, just post them below. Thanks for watching. Uh, show me to your friends. Um, thanks. Peace out.